okay now we will talk about the types of friction okay uh, actually this forces the types of the forces has to be discussed in you know the first uh, one fourth of the chapter but why I am discussing at this level you know because till this time we are uh, quite we have discussed a lot about the friction we have discussed a lot about the uh, you know the ways to reduce the friction and we have discussed much about the friction. So, I feel that this is the right uh, point where we can talk about the types of the friction ok because it will give you a better understanding. So, what we are talking about now we are talking about types of friction. Okay, we are talking here about the types of friction. Okay, so what are the different types of friction, children? It can be static friction, okay, static friction, it can be sliding friction, and it can be rolling friction. Okay. So, what are the different types of the friction children? It can be static friction, it can be sliding friction and it can be rolling friction. Okay. Now, the name itself is suggesting what it is. See, I will start from here. This one is the easiest one. Lo rolling friction. What is, the, what is the meaning of rolling friction? The friction when the body rolls on the surface. Okay. So, this friction is created when the body rolls on some surface that is the uh, example of rolling friction ok. Now, this the second one sliding friction when the body is moving ok, it is not circular, it is not uh, rolling, but it is moving on the surface then it is what kind of friction it is known as sliding friction. The first one is for static friction, now this one you have to understand. Okay, so I will begin with the first friction. First of all, static friction. Just now we have discussed about the um, spring balance. Okay, that was the reason why I wanted to discuss spring balance because now here we will be using spring balance on the blackboard. Okay, so this is a box or a brick. To this, what is tied? A spring balance is ok. Now, see please try to understand children. Now, first of all in the beginning when I try to uh, when I will not say I or you when the brick or the box is pulled ok. In the beginning when the force is applied to pull this brick or box ok. What will happen? You will see that the box, this brick is not moving, ok children. Brick is not moving, but this force here, spring balance is showing the reading, ok. That means, what does it mean, children? It means that, uh, the, like you know, the brick is there, it is being pulled, ok. It is being pulled with what force it is pulled, that reading is coming, but it is not moving. Why it is not moving? Because simple, it needs greater force, isn't it? This blackboard is there. I am trying to move it. Why it is not coming out? Because the force with which this blackboard can be removed, I am not applying that much of force. Rather, I do not have so much of energy, isn't it? So, I am moving this blackboard. Why it is not coming out? Because the amount of force which is required to bring this blackboard out or to move this blackboard is not being applied understood. Same is the case here that reading will be seen here ok. The reading will be seen here, but this brick is not moving ok. Now again when the force is applied you will see again the reading increases ok. If you apply more force this reading will be increased and still you will find that brick is not moving. Okay. Then when it will, what will happen then? 
then ultimately you will apply greater force and now the moment okay the moment at which this brick moves you have to read, read the reading that reading that reading is the static force okay that reading is the static force so what is the static force children the force okay the amount of friction okay the friction the friction which is there in the stationary surfaces the friction which is there on the stationary surfaces the surfaces which are not moving okay the friction which exist the friction which exist the friction which exist between the two surfaces that are in contact but okay but what the friction which exists between okay the friction which exists exists between the two surfaces that are in contact but no relative movement okay no relative movement no relative movement is there okay the friction which exists okay the friction which exists between the two surfaces that are in contact okay the brick and the like that surface the surface okay where the brick was kept those two surfaces was in contact but brick was not moving okay so the friction which exists between the two surfaces that are in contact okay they are in contact but no relative movement is there but it is but but that object is not moving okay now we will talk about now the second type of friction which is what type of friction sliding friction okay this is what sliding friction okay now when a body moves okay when a body moves on the surface the friction which is created between the two surfaces is what it is sliding friction okay so how can we write this the friction which exist between the two sliding surface okay the friction which exists between the two sliding surface is what is sliding friction okay so what is the difference between static and sliding friction okay here the object is not in motion suppose this is the object and this is the surface okay but here the motion is not there okay it is kept and due to that whatever friction is created that is static friction and here when a object is moving okay and the 
moving object and this surface whatever friction is there that friction ok that is known as what sliding friction. Now last one is for children last one is rolling friction it is rolling friction. Okay. Now, how can we define a rolling friction? It is what when a body rolls on the surface, okay. when a body rolls on a surface then it is known as rolling friction. So, how can we write it? When a body, when a body rolls on a surface, Okay, the friction created or exerted between them is called as rolling friction. Okay, so we will talk about the three forces and we will also talk about which one is greater and which one is the least one. Now first of all when we talk about the static friction, static friction is which friction? It is a friction when the body is not moving, okay. It is a friction when the body is not moving. It is a friction when the body, one body is sliding on the surface of the like on the other surface ok. Here the body is rolling ok, here the body is just rolling. Now again come to that same experiment children where the brick was there and it was tied with the spring balance and it was tied with the spring balance ok. So when you try to pull this ok, when you try to pull this box you will see the reading but you will not see the brick moving ok. That friction is what children static friction ok. Now static friction is the highest friction or you know I can say uh, it needs uh, like the, the energy which is required to move a stationary body is highest ok. Like if the movement this uh, you know this brick starts moving then the energy which will be required to keep it in movement ok that will be lesser than the force which is required to um, you know to bring that substance into weight ok. What I mean to say is the static friction is the highest friction. What does it mean if a body is at rest ok. If a body is at rest then the force which is required to bring that body into motion into motion will be quite higher ok will be higher ok. You know once I give you example also while teaching this that suppose a car is not in working condition and people have to push the car to bring it in motion. So, when they start pushing the car ok, when the people start pushing the car the force which is required once to bring that car into motion ok, that car is at rest it is not moving and when people started pushing the car a, a time will come within a minute or two that car will start moving ok, within one minute or say something like that. So, you know in the beginning the force which is required to bring that car into motion will be higher. But after that you know you will find that the people are at little ease because now just car is at mo in movement and just they have to push only to keep that car into movement ok. Same is here when the car was there standing it was static friction. When they started pushing that was the force which were they applying to bring it in motion ok. It was the amount of force which was applied was static friction ok which was the reading was noted if noted. 
Now, once it comes in motion, starts moving, then the friction which is there between the car and the surface, between the tires and the surface is sliding friction. Okay. Now, why this one is highest? Because it is very difficult to bring the uh, object which is at rest to bring that object from the rest position to the motion situation. Okay. It is very difficult, it takes more force to you know bring the object from rest position into the position of the movement okay, when it starts moving. When it starts moving then it becomes easy, then it is easy to keep in movement. Okay. Okay. Now third is rolling friction, when a substance when an object rolls, okay, when a substance or object rolls then this kind of friction is known as rolling friction. Now here I have taken an inclined plane okay, and here I have taken one cell, okay, I have taken one cell, this is a cylindrical shape of the cell. Okay. Now you all know when the cell is taken on the inclined plane, it will roll faster, it will come down faster, is not it? In place of this cell, if I keep some triangle or some square or some rectangular shape thing, okay, then it will take much time, okay, it will take or I can say it will take more time than the circular surface to come down. Okay. Again we will discuss this, suppose if I have taken one inclined plane, okay. on this inclined plane suppose if we have kept one what cell, it will come down immediately. In the second case if we take some rectangular or square shape, it will take little more time to come down from an inclined plane. Okay. Now we will talk about the two experiments. Okay. Now in one case why I am taking this experiment because rolling friction like it is the least one. Okay. I can write in this way that static friction, static friction is greatest and sliding friction is again greater than the rolling friction. Okay, but how the surface can also change the rolling friction, we will just have a look on this. Okay. Now if you have to, uh, you can conduct this experiment very smaller one, just take one inclined plane, it is not at all difficult children to take an inclined plane or to make an inclined plane, just take two bricks and you can keep even your books in this position. Okay. Now you have got two inclined planes. Now, you have got two same similar cells, okay, cell battery which are not in working condition. Now you will keep it on both the inclined plane and will leave it at the same time, okay, and you will note the timings till where it goes, okay. In the first case, the inclined plane is made at your like I am talking about the two inclined planes which are made at your own house in your own room one inclined plane is normal, the cell will slide down, it will slide down and do you think it will stop? If I make an inclined plane here, if I roll a cell, it will go further, is not it? It will go till further, it will cover more distance, it will not stop here, is not it? It will not stop here, this is your first case. Second case, you will put lot of sand over here. Okay you will put lot of sand over here. So both the cases did you understand? First case you will arrange an inclined plane and this you will take one cell what you have to which you have to leave it. Okay. In second case the same inclined plane is there, same cell is there but as soon as the inclined plane gets over here you will uh, keep lot of sand, you will spread lot of sand. Okay. Now, leave the cell, both the cells at the same time and note the distance what they have covered. Okay. When the cell is left from here, this is the inclined plane but it will not stop here, it will keep on rolling and will cover some more distance, is not it? Okay. In the first case, 
where there was no sand it will cover greater distance which can be noted can be marked by you in the second case where the sand was there you will find that the cell gets stuck in the sand and will not rotate will not cover any further distance why does it happen children because rolling friction is there it is faster agreed okay but it also depends upon the surface if the surface okay if the surface is quite uneven if the surface is very rough then what will happen the uh, motion will be affected we have read this isn't it we have studied this that roughness increases the friction and smoothness what they smoothness what 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 will happen smoothness will decrease the friction isn't it if the surface is rough that means friction will be more and if the surface is very smooth then the friction will be it will be what lesser isn't it so here the surface was quite uh, rough and so friction increased and it was so increased that it didn't allow the cell to move further okay so what we are discussing children we are discussing types of the forces first type is static uh, static friction what is what does it means that means the friction which is there between the two surface when the body is not moving please keep this in your mind when the friction is there but when the body is not moving okay when the sur when the friction is created between a moving body sliding body and the surface very simple that is sliding friction when the body rolls and exert creates a friction that is rolling friction okay static friction is the highest one that means the amount of force which has to be applied to bring a uh, bring a object from its rest position to what motion will be highest okay it needs great amount of force to bring an object from its position of rest to the motion okay then the sliding is little lesser than what the static friction and the rolling friction is the least friction what does it means that rolling friction reduces the ro rolling surface reduces the friction isn't it if you remember about the wheels wheels which are attached to the you know the school bags also nowadays wheels which are attached to the uh, suitcases you know if you have to uh, take a suitcase from you know uh, even like half a kilometer it becomes really difficult but you have to drag the suitcase you have you have your suitcase have the wheels and you have a trolley in your hand you can take it to even 1 kilometer isn't it why it is so because the wheels are what it is rolling friction is there and rolling friction is the least friction okay because it rolls continuously the surface area also get reduced the rolling friction is the, the least fri the friction which is the least one and so the friction is reduced and so the wheels are the one which which makes the movement very easier just imagine you have to ride a bicycle without wheel what you will do can you ride it you cannot isn't it you have to lift that will also become very very difficult for you isn't it so wheels this ball bearings okay the circular things what they do they reduce the friction they make the things move very easily isn't it so rolling friction is the friction which is you know is can be seen between uh, between the rolling the the cylindrical surfaces or the such kind of surfaces and the thus where they are in contact okay so this was about the types of the friction now we'll see the nature of the friction how what is the nature of the friction okay now we'll talk then about the nature of the friction okay what is the nature of frictional force you know the frictional force is self adjusting now what is the meaning of self adjustment of the friction see when the substance is pulled okay we are applying force okay as usual i am making one box this chapter is totally full of boxes okay so when this box is there i have to pull the box 
okay. So, when the force is increased, I will have to increase the force, when the force is increased even the friction will get increased, okay. even the friction will get increased. Now, again the again more force will be applied by me, I will apply more force. So, every time friction cannot increase is not it. So, this is known as what self adjusting nature of the friction. Now, what will happen if the force which is exerted by me will be greater than the frictional force then what will happen the body will move is not it. So, did you understand what we are studying I am saying friction is a self adjusting force ok. Friction is a self adjusting force ok, friction is a self adjusting force what does it means when force is applied ok, when force is applied on any body. Okay. When force is applied on any body, the friction also get increased. Okay. The friction will also get increased, but friction cannot keep on increasing or else we would not be able to walk only, you know, we would not be able like no substance can be moving if friction keep on increasing. So, here what happened friction now when force is increased again when force is increased again the friction will be self adjusted and will not increase is not it that means friction cannot keep on increasing it even has some limitations. So, now what is happening when force is applied on any body the friction get increased, but again when the greater force is applied on a body every time friction will not increase and then ultimately the body will come in the motion. So, but when force is increased again the friction will be self adjusted and will not increase ok and thus the object will come into motion this is what is the nature of friction that is self adjustment of the that means in a simple language when you start pushing something you need greater amount of force ok you need greater amount of force to bring that uh, substance that object into motion. This is the hundred time I must be saying I am saying this please keep this thing in mind you have to apply this thing that whenever a substance has to be moved from its has to be brought from rest position into motion what will happen the force which will have to be applied will be higher that means it is easy to keep a moving body in its moving situation rather to bring a object from its rest position to moving position ok. So, this is about friction is a self adjusting force. Okay, we have almost completed this chapter and in discussing while discussing or while observing studying this chapter if this thought has came to your mind that there should be no friction and without friction our life would have become easier if this thought would have come in your mind then throw that thought 
okay then why because friction is creating little problem only little what are the disadvantages of friction only very few very few first one is what it wears and tears the things isn't it the machines are you know when the machines are run the surfaces comes in contact and the surfaces which comes in contact undergoes wear and tear that means the machines has to be replaced okay from time to time this is the first disadvantage what is the second disadvantage second disadvantage is like your shoes has to be changed your chappals has to be changed isn't it? your sandals has to be changed why it has to be changed because when we walk our uh, shoe you know the surface uh, shoe surface comes in contact with the what road that means again the friction is there continuous friction has is there so you have to change your shoes okay what is the third disadvantage tires of your bicycle of your mama's car your papa's car has to be replaced within certain limits within certain time why because again when the car moves on the roads okay the surface become what very smooth the surface of the tire become very smooth so again it is very dangerous do you know that children that on the surface of the uh, wheels okay on the surface of the tires rather not wheels on the surface of the tire no some grooves are there okay some grooves are there that means surface is uneven totally uneven okay why the surface of the tires are uneven so that the friction can be there between the surface and your vehicle why we are doing so why we want to spoil the tire why we don't use very smooth tire okay so now the point is that this is only the few disadvantages you might be seeing or might have observed but i will talk about it tire also but you know these only three disadvantages are there rest we have got lot of advantages of friction one more thing is agreed that we have to apply more force to avoid friction to overcome friction isn't it so if uh, friction is uh, there we have to apply more force but then do you think that in absence of friction that in absence but do you think that in absence of friction our life would have become easier so that is a big no children okay why big no because you know without this friction we cannot we, uh, walk you know we uh, cannot ride without friction okay there are many things which you cannot do without friction you cannot even put a nail into the wall because you know the nail goes into the wall because of the friction if there is no friction you you cannot put the nail into the wall okay you cannot join the two wood pieces you cannot uh, you know you cannot run your vehicles cannot run okay so friction is very very important okay so now we are going to study about the advantages of friction okay what we are going to read now study now advantages of friction okay so what is the first advantage of friction it is walking okay when we walk okay when we walk our uh, you know the shoe surface comes in or our legs surface comes in contact of the earth when we keep our legs like this okay due to friction it doesn't slips like this okay due to friction our leg doesn't slips like this and we are able to keep our legs like this then second step we will take and again our legs doesn't slips that means due to friction we are able to walk okay friction drags us back that is the reason we just do not slip 
while walking, while running. Okay? If just imagine there is no friction, how will you walk? As soon as you keep your leg, it will be, you will, you are, you will go ahead only. You won't be able to walk, isn't it? Why? Because, you know, uh, just imagine a room with lot of, lot of, uh, you know, soap water. What will happen? You will keep your step and you will go further. Your leg, you will fall down but your legs will move further and you will not be able to control yourself. Why you won't be able to control uh, yourself? Because friction is not there. Too much of smoothness is there and so you won't be able to walk. So, what is essential? Friction is very very essential to walk. Okay. Now, second is writing. Just imagine if there is no friction or imagine a very uh, glossy thing like you know uh, a very shiny glass. Why you are not able to write on the glass? Because it is very very smooth. It is very smooth is not it? It slips. You would not be able to write. Just take one more example children. Pens you know always you will find in the uh, you know first part of the pen from where you hold you will find some grip is there. Okay, some grip is there. Why this grip is there children? So that you can hold the pen nicely. There are also pens which does not have grip. It is all you know very smooth, shiny, but then you cannot use those pens in your exams. Why? Because you have to write very fast and if there is no grip for you to hold, your pen will keep on slipping from your hands. It will slip from your hands, is not it? So, please, please note your pen, please observe your pen. In the first half, okay, in the first part where you hold, okay, your fingers bind the pen from where, you will always find some, you know, round, 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 like rough surface is there. Why is it there? So that you can put your grip, your, like grip can be increased, okay. So, why you are able to write children? Because there is a friction between the pen and the paper. There is a friction between the pencil and the paper. That is the reason you are able to write. When I talk, when I am saying about the grip, just take the example of your cricket bat. When you play without the grip, you won't be able to play properly, okay, because the hands will slip. So, what do you need to do? You need to put a grip to the cricket bat. Cricket bat. Even, you know, just talk about any bat, like a badminton bat. Again, the grip has to be there, that roughness has to be there, which even your, your hands sweats. On sweating also, your racket, your bed does not move out of your hand, is not it? So, that is the thing for writing also, we need to have a good grip. So, in the pen near the binding of your fingers, you will always see some rough surfaces there, ok. So, this is again the advantage of friction. Okay, now what can be the third, when we talk about the third advantage of friction, you know, without friction, you know, just imagine what are the things which is just not possible. So, again, okay. So, again when we talk about the fire, okay. Now, just uh, try to recall how fire was originated, how fire came into existence. If you remember the things properly, you might be knowing this that two stones, when the two stones they rubbed, okay, or were rubbed uh, among each other, then what happened? A spark came out, okay. The sparks were coming out when the stones were rubbed with a great force. Why they were coming out? Why the spark was coming out? Because of lot of friction which was there between the two rough surfaces of the two stones, isn't it? That was the reason why the spark came out, okay. So, I am talking about fire. So, when you talk about the first spark, okay, the, when you are talking about the first time when the fire was invented, it was also due to the friction. 
okay when the stones were rubbed properly with a great force it gave rise to spark and this the fire was found okay now in the same way when we talk about the present day fire when we talk about the present day fire just take the matchstick box okay and just see it from the corners where we rub the matchstick okay where we rub the matchstick and we and we get the fire what is there why the surface is rough just touch it it's not even it's not smooth at all why is it so rough you know children here the sulfur is used red sulfur and along with that some you know very grinded one uh, pieces of glasses glasses there okay why is it used so that so much of friction is created okay now fr when friction is created this friction we have read friction give rise to heat hmm? so when friction is there then again it give rise to heat and red sulfur gets converted into white sulfur which catches fire so the thing which has to be mentioned is what whenever the match box is used whenever we have to bring the fire whenever we have we want fire what has to be done a matchstick has to be what has to be rubbed where to a very uh, rough surface again it will give rise to what fire is it it so matchstick is taken it is rubbed at the uh, you know edges the two sides of the matchstick box so what happens due to that roughness the friction is there and due to friction the heat is produced and due to that heat the sulfur starts burning so that is again fire which is very very important because of friction only we are able to have fire okay now what is the next one okay when i talk about walking then what's wrong with vehicles can you ride a vehicle without friction just imagine you have to ride your bicycle in uh, in between the you know soapy water hmm? where lot of oil is there okay can you ride you cannot ride why because so much of oil is there you will just slip over there you won't be able to move an inch with your bicycle you just slip why because for running vehicles also we need lot of friction lot of friction has to be there now i was talking about the grooves okay the rough surface which is there on the tires you know if you are if you are using one tire continuously regularly for few months you will find that ridges that grooves comes to an end okay when this ridges and grooves comes to end then what happens the tire becomes very smooth now when the tire becomes very smooth it will often slip okay it will often the person whose tires are have become very smooth will often slip and will met and met accidents okay so it is very very important that if you want to run your vehicle safely it has to have grooves it has to have rough surface until and unless rough surface is there the friction between the what between the tires and the road will get reduced and you won't be able to ride okay so these all points are there which is what which is counted as an advantage these are just a minimum you know the least one for doing anything okay like for doing anything means what if even if you want to uh, you know you want to play you want to run so for doing all these kind of things you need to have friction until and unless friction is there we cannot work okay just take an example of a table at your home if the table is even a slightest unlevel okay it's not at level if you keep the dishes over there it will just keep on sliding it will just keep on falling down until and unless you keep your uh, table at the level you know if the thing start moving you won't be able to stop it if the friction is not there okay because the things will keep on slipping and moving out until unless the friction is there when you apply brake what you do you apply friction opposite friction is it it opposite friction has to be applied 
to keep the uh, to bring the bicycle into the position of rest or stationary ok. So, these all are the advantages of friction. So, we read about the disadvantages also what were the disadvantages of friction, but those are quite lesser in front of the advantages. So, this was all about the friction, thank you.